Welcome back to Steps to Freedom. We're working on miracle list number six, eight, and number 14. Again, if you don't have the miracle list or if you have one that doesn't have a number 14, you're welcome to email me and I'll send you a copy. Email me at steps to freedom, adc at gmail.com. All right, this is week seven. Wow, we're more than halfway finished. Good job for getting here. Thank you for coming tonight. Last week, we talked about overcoming rejection. We wa watched a little bit of that video and um, we talked a little bit about self-deliverance. How many of you got a chance to watch some more of the video? Somebody? Yes, thank you. Danielle, appreciate that. Look, you will only get out of this course what you put into it, right? That's it. God will always meet you. He'll always meet you. But if you're like, eh, you know, I'll just show up at class and not do the homework. Well, you're only going to get 10% of what the miracle list is meant to do for you. Because you're just hearing. We talk a little bit. Okay. And sometimes there's experience, but you got to go home and do it. And it's in your private time with God. I say this about deliverance. So people come here to the center and they listen to the message and they get some deliverance in the, in the main sanctuary. And that's great. But you know, the majority of the work is done all by yourself. Okay, so that's it. So last week was overcoming rejection. This week, we're going to talk about, um, you know, the, the Proverbs is all about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And that's what this week is about. So you're going to have to do some reading. Okay. Proverbs 5.1 says this, a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Hosea 4.6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, the Lord says, I will also reject you. Look, we can't afford to have God rejecting us. You need him on your side. You cannot get delivered of, of hurts or wounds. You can't get healed. You can't get delivered of spirits. None of that can happen without the Holy Spirit. Okay? You will stay sick. You will stay brokenhearted. You'll stay stuck. You have, to, you have to have God's favor upon you. So look, I'm going to give you some knowledge tonight. And then I and hope to inspire you to go and seek that knowledge out. Okay, and learn more. You got to have God on your side. Because he is the Lord that heals you. Exodus 15, 26. Psalms 107, 20 says, He sent his word, his word and healed them, and delivered them from all their destructions. Have you had some destruction in your life? Do you feel like some parts of your life are destroyed, or they're being destroyed? God's Word is what you need. And you need the, um, the experience of those who have gone before us. And we'll be talking about two of those authors. Okay. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he healed back then, he heals now. If he delivered back then, he will deliver now. Okay? So hopefully those scriptures have inspired you to now read your Bible. Jesus, uh, the red letters... In a, in a Bible that has the red letter edition. That's what Jesus said. Those are the most powerful words in the universe. God spoke creation into existence. He wants to speak into your life. So here's your list, okay? John chapter 14. Yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> Read the whole thing, okay? Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. He talks about that in John chapter 14. 
John chapter 15 is where he's talking and he says, I am the vine and you are the what? Branches. You are the branches. Okay. And the father, he is the one who he prunes the vine. He takes care of it. John chapter 16, I have spoken to you the whole chapter. Jesus is speaking and the father is speaking through Jesus. Matthew chapter 8, I am willing. It says, whatever you pray in my name, Jesus said, whatever you pray in my name, it shall be done for you, given to you, right? Anything like a limousine? No, according to God's will. So what does God want for us? Well, this is a great chapter. Matthew chapter 8, you'll know what, what is God willing to do for you? He wants you to have good sleep. He wants you to have peace in your mind. He wants you to have good health in your body. He wants you to have deep understanding in your, your soul and in your mind about his truths and what's going on in your life. Matthew chapter 9, take up your bed. He said that to the, the paralytic. He forgave him his sins, and then he said, yeah, be healed. It was nothing. Jesus healed a guy who was paralyzed for a very long time as if it was nothing. Mm -hmm. And for him, it is nothing. Our healing, God is not waiting to heal you. He's waiting for you to be ready. These scriptures will help you to get ready. Jesus cures mental illness. Psychology does not cure mental illness. Psychiatry does not cure mental illness, but Jesus did cure mental illness during uh, his stay on the earth, and he still does it through the Holy Spirit. So we got Mark, Mark chapter 5, a man with an unclean spirit. That's a story there. Mark chapter 7, the children's bread. It's in there. Mark chapter 9. He commanded the deaf and dumb spirit. I'm telling you, Mark's, I mean, all the Gospels, you can find examples of Jesus casting out demons uh, and healing the sick and bringing wholeness to his people. And then number four, Matthew chapter 28, make disciples and teach them what I taught you. Make disciples of all nations, right? You need to keep reading and rereading. I put, wrote seven to eight times. <clears throat> when you read something, you may remember 30% of what you read. So you have to keep going over it and over it and over it. The Word of God is living. It's alive. So what you read today, you're going to get something out different when you read it next week. So... It, I didn't put it in here, but in Psalms 1, it says that if you meditate on the Word of God day and night, that you will be like a tree planted by a river of water. And in one translation, it says, whatever your hand touches will prosper. I put this to the test one time in my life. Well, maybe more than once, but the first time I did it, I was a brand new teacher and I hated my job. I had spent a lot of money and a lot of tears and a lot of years in college, and I got my degree in teaching. And now I'm a teacher, and I hated it. I was unsuccessful. The, I was teaching junior high school. That's probably why. <laughs> um, it was hard. It, there were so many things that were hard about it, and I wanted to quit every day, every summer, I was like, what could I do differently? I do not like this job. And then I came across Psalms 1. If I meditate on the Word of God day and night, then whatever my hand touches shall prosper. And I was like, I need some prosperity right now. I don't like this job. I do not like it. And, and my evaluator was like, yeah, you need a different job. They didn't... I, other people didn't like me doing that job. So I really felt like quitting. But I couldn't imagine what else could I do. So I hung in there. I took a whole year and I said, all right, God, I'm going to test you on your word. And I got up in the morning and I read. 
And I stayed, the last thing I did before I went to sleep at night, I read. And I read my Bible morning and night. And do you know that next school year, now that school year I was reading that was the same, hated it. That next school year, God placed me, and yes, he placed me at a school and that became my best teaching experience. I flourished there. I had favor with the principal. He was a backslidden Christian. God had me speak into his life. My students, they were poor. They were heartbroken. And I had got some opportunities to speak into their lives. It was amazing. It was amazing. And I, I was there five years, and that's when I went back to school and got my master's degree in counseling. It was just a wonderful experience. It really was. If you med He's true to his word. I meditated on his word day and night. Did I always remember what I read? No, especially I went through the Bible in one year. So especially like I got the numbers. I'm like, what am I even reading? But I just kept going. I just kept going. Because I'm like, I need to prosper. I need a better life. So do it. Okay, keep reading. Stay on these chapters um, for a set amount of time. And then you'll know when it's time to move to something else, okay? But these will help you. Uh, and now we need to move to the next slide. That's going to happen. There we go. Okay. Yes, you can be cured too. I'm not saying that you're mentally ill. Okay, maybe somebody in here might be. But, uh, you know, mental illness, <clears throat> if you don't have a diagnosis of mental illness, Illness doesn't mean you don't struggle with some aspects of mental illness. I found that um, actually it's more than 50% of the population struggles with some sort form of mental illness, whether it's depression, anxiety, okay, those two things alone. Some people hear voices, some people see hallucinations. There's some racing thoughts. You feel really down. You feel great, and then you feel super low. You know, some aspect of mental illness. Doesn't mean you're mentally ill. It just means that you're, you're struggling emotionally, okay? But I know you can be cured. I was cured. I know you can be cured. All right, <clears throat> two additional readings, and this is going to be part of the discussion next week. So, Pigs in the Parlor, chapter 21. I want you to read that. Pigs in the Parlor, chapter 21. If you have not read this book yet, you have to read it. I wish that I had read it years ago when I first met Mike and Hardcore Christianity. It would have made all the difference, I think. It just explains very simply how this whole, what's going on. With the spirits, how they work, how they operate, how do they how they trick us? Chapter twenty one. Okay, so remember when? Um, yeah, that's a good chapter twenty one, and even the chapter before that. So before we started recording for our YouTube streamers, I was talking about binding spirits. Okay, this is a great chapter. It's got a list of things, and you might call them emotions: doubt, unbelief, insecurity. Rebellion, lust, okay, emotions, desires. These are spirits. We identify spirits by what they do. That's how, that's how we call them. We don't, here at the Arizona Deliverance Center, we do not um, say, you know, Jezebel, come out. We don't do that. You might hear, I don't know, I don't ever hear it. You know, we don't, we, there are names of specific spirits that people have identified or maybe the Bible talks about, but we don't do that here. We call out spirits by what they do, their symptom they cause. It makes it really easy, okay, for people to identify with that. If I'm saying, Leviathan, come out, the person's like, what's that? Is that, a, you know, but if I say anger, come out. Rage come out, unforgiveness come out, then they know what I'm talking about. So when you're binding spirits, maybe you're not ready to uh, do deliverance. Maybe you're not ready to kick these things out for whatever reason. You don't feel confident. Um, you want help. 
but they're messing with your thinking, they're messing with your sleep, they're causing anxiety, they're causing arguments with the people you love, bind the spirits. And just say, I bind you in Jesus' name. I bind the spirit of strife. I bind the spirit of anger. I bind the spirit of confusion. Okay, so that's the theme for my week, binding the spirits. All right, number two reading is Plano Spirits, pages 13 through 24. This is going to talk about um, more uh, about bitterness, about how bitterness and mental illness go hand in hand. Okay, how rebellion can lead to mental illness. So, and you need to gain knowledge, get wisdom, get knowledge, get understanding. So use the word of God, but then use um, Pigs in the Parlor by Frank and Ida Mae Hammond. Uh, they're considered, you know, solid leaders. They're passed away now, but they really have, a, they had a ton of experience and they paved the way for many people doing deliverance. And then Plano Spirits is by Mike Smith. So, all right, next week that'll be a part of the discussion. All right, I want to remind you <clears throat> that uh, tomorrow on Wednesday nights is the Zoom, Zoom call. It's a Zoom deliverance with Rick Cott. Um, has anybody been on that in here? Okay, one, two, three. You haven't been on it? Come on. All right. So um, if you have a Facebook page, that's wonderful. And you can look up Steps of Deliverance. On Facebook, Steps of Deliverance, they'll post the Zoom link. And you can get on there. Um, <clears throat> You turn on your camera, you let them know you're participating. If you're not comfortable with the camera, don't worry about that. Just leave it off. Just listen. Kind of see how it goes. Maybe you're brand new to deliverance. No one in here, but maybe streaming. Um, maybe you're new to deliverance and you're not quite sure, okay, what is this all about? Just get on there and listen. Just listen. There's some teaching. This call goes from, I believe, 7 o'clock at night, I think, 7 o'clock at night, 6 o'clock at night, oh, thank you, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and they stay on there till midnight. And there's several different ministers that will, that work with you. <clears throat> and they'll work with you individually. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on with you tonight, you know? Oh, I'm doing this and that, and okay, well, let's repent, let's forgive. And then they start doing deliverance. That's really amazing. It's, it's wonderful. Um, I said in another teaching that if you are going through your process of deliverance, uh, stick with the Arizona Deliverance Center. Don't go off to the, there's lots of people doing deliverance these days. Lots of deliverance ministers. Just stick with us, okay? Stick with us for a time. And then you'll get what you're going to get. You're not going to get confused because we all teach the same thing. And then at a certain point, you know, when it's time, you'll move on. And God will, will lead you someplace else. Or you'll stay with us, and that'll be awesome. But for, while you're here, stay with us, okay? Don't, don't confuse yourself with this ministry and that ministry and what that person from England said and that person in Australia. And just stop all that. Okay, we have plenty of resources here. <clears throat> If you are in Arizona, if you are in Phoenix or in the surrounding areas, we have people that come from Prescott. Lights. We have Colleen. Prescott, thank you. We have people come up from Casa Grande. Yeah, people drive to get here. Buckeye, all the way in Buckeye. Okay. Uh, way out in Scottsdale. <laughs> it can be quite a drive, especially with traffic. But people come from all over. And they make the trip. Every Thursday night, Rick Cott, again, he preaches. And then uh, there's a mass deliverance service. People get a lot of freedom at these services. And then Friday nights, Mike Smith will preach, or it's Peter V. David Baldwin has been preaching. We hope to see him more. And Brother Francis is rare, but it does happen. And, and he's an excellent minister. He ministers a little different, but effective too. Okay? So <clears throat> I talked about... 
you know, whatever you put into this is what you're going to get out of it. So if you only show up once a week for the two hours that we meet, well, you're only going to get that little bit of benefit. But if you get into it, I'm going to do the homework. You know, the best you can, of course. I'm going to do the homework. I'm going to come to one service a week. That's what I say. Either come or get on Zoom at least once a week and start going through some self-deliverance, okay? Get some help with that. Here are some reminders essential to your freedom. Hopefully, you, um, every night you need to forgive those who hurt you and pray for them. You need to forgive. I'm sure someone's hurt you in the last week. I got my my little feelings hurt in the last week, and I got to keep, oh, no I, for, no, I forgave that person. I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to entertain that conversation or even entertain what am I going to say to them the next time I see them. No, forget all that. Just forgive him. Forgive her. Bless. Pray for them. Okay? Stop complaining. Mm -hmm. Stop complaining. Stop gossiping about it. Stop talking about it. Stop uh, all that. You need to fight your negative thoughts. You even need to fight the positive thoughts, okay? Um, <clears throat> some positive thoughts are the same as the negative thoughts. Let me call them uh, thoughts, maybe ideas of grandeur. Oh, when I have my new job, I'm going to move into this luxury condo in downtown Phoenix, and I'm going to buy this and that, and let me get online, and let me look on Pinterest, and let me design it, you know? And you haven't even applied for the job yet. You're not even qualified for that job, okay? That's a delusion of grandeur. Stop that. Grab those thoughts, capture them, look at them, say, no, that's not reality. Okay, same thing with the negative, right? I'm too weak, I'm too stupid, I'm not, I can't. No, you need to replace them. Hey, don't give up on this. It takes time. This is a process. I wish everyone could be delivered like that. I wish everyone could have their mind renewed first time reading your Bible. It doesn't work like that. You got to give it time. Okay, hang in there. And uh, pray. Pray in the Spirit. Build up your faith. All right? Don't forget, I'm here to remind you. So pray in the Spirit. Pray in tongues. Bind the spirits. Okay? Bless those who hurt you. Pray for your, bless yourself. Maybe you keep hurting yourself. Maybe hurting your own feelings. Bless yourself. Pray for yourself. Okay, God is for you. And if God is for you, then that entity that's against you and those people that are against you, that, that's not going to prosper. Okay, God is for you. So thank you so much um, for listening tonight. Thank you, streamers. For uh, I'm really pleased with the email feedback. Thank you. I appreciate that. Again, if you want the miracle list that I have uh, merged the different miracle list that Mike's put together, I'll email it to you. Steps to freedom, adc at gmail.com. Thanks. All right.